nil-qakom għal din il-podcast tijej, il-mistidin taħna l-umu għa joran zammit, joran uwa skeptik, kif u koll interessat f'dan il-fenomenu. Naħdu għal din l-intervista, enjoy. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Well, <laughs> او نارا و مشين و دابا منهم كنا قاعدين لسا ساعة و في العلقة و بدت ميشا بالمو بالموت و فهم منهم تاع هذا القوي يتلقو اوب بارنيا ما يكون قديم ساقود الدنيا ميشي شي سمبيو ملين على غبار شي بومبين وكل ريال اتفهمني او ما يهدو خسيبا عليا الدنيا طالب بسا احنا هنا وانتي كنا رايني في مارسو تسانا لحنا احا وانتي الدنايت بيا ايه ايه ازاتمنت كيف الدنايت بيا انت حسي تاكشا جايو افهمني هي ناقصني نارهم سبيس وفي دقة واحدة خيرست الفوق انت كنت ايا تم هو اكلك ديك شني انت كلك الابارات اكتار مني بيش تغضم دا كلك الموبايل كباشي دا هو فيك اي تنتي ازات شني Jere tarafi ħġara pari ħħir saħaj u bħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħħ
What do you think about the footages that we showed you? I mean, they're definitely interesting. Uh, one thing you always have to keep in mind is just because you don't know what something is doesn't mean there isn't an explanation for it. Now, of course, this explanation could be complicated, it could be simple, it could be we don't know. But I think in general, some people are scared to say, I don't know what something is. So let's say we're out, we're, we're in the car, we went to buy a pizza, a kebab, we parked somewhere and we're eating. And we see something in the sky moving. Technically, it's a UFO, yes, because we don't know what it is. It's unidentified. That's all that means. If it's not a plane or a drone. Yeah, if you can't see it clearly, yes, then it's, it's unidentified. unidentified. Now, some people will tell you, oh, it's a UFO. And by UFO, they mean the alien type of UFO. There's an alien or an alien drone. But that could have many explanations could be a very small drone, it could be a plane in the distance, could be an optical illusion. Satellite, maybe. It could be a satellite, it could be many different things. But I think in general, you have to keep in mind that if you believe in UFOs or in aliens or any of these things, that's going to be the first thing you're going to say. So you see something, you believe in UFOs, you see something, you don't know what it is, it's in the sky, it's moving, then you're going to say it's a UFO. You want it to be a UFO. Because you believe in them, you want them to be real. And I don't believe in, in UFOs that visit us, so my first inclination is not going to be, that's a UFO, that's a space, that's a spacecraft, that's a, an, an alien man ship. And you have to keep in mind that people will believe what they want to believe in the sense that sometimes if you're presented with evidence for and evidence against something and you believe one side over the other then you will subconsciously believe the side you're on so if you believe in UFOs and there's two people arguing, one saying, here's the evidence for UFOs, here's the evidence against UFOs. Most people, it's very normal, everyone does it, you do it, I do it, everyone does it, will tend to stick to the side they're already on. So they'll say, okay, he has good points, he has good points, but I want it to be real, so I'm going to believe him. So... I can't tell you what what's on the, the video. I don't know what's on uh, the video. That, it's unexplainable. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I can agree with you on that. I can't explain it. Maybe someone else can. But... Uh, I mean, I saw twice. Uh, mm. For sure, they're not uh, man-made, let's say that. I don't know from where they're coming. I don't know what they are. But for sure, twice in daylight. Uh, no, one in, was in daylight and one was a, at night. So I can't explain those. The one, that's one that I saw with the guy of the field in daylight. Yes. Uh, maybe it was a balloon, but it's unexplainable. It moved away. It sometimes uh, yes. dimmed. Yes, sometimes it could be weather balloons, could be hot air balloons. Again, sometimes optical illusions. One thing I, I want to mention is you have to keep in mind the person you're talking to as well. For example... If if I tell you I saw a UFO and you know I'm a skeptic, then you're going to have a certain frame of mind. Like, oh, this guy said he saw a UFO, but he doesn't believe in UFOs. Like, wow, what did you see? What? But if someone already believes in UFOs, then you might say, no, this guy believes in them. You know, he he could see anything, yeah. and it could be a, a UFO for Picture, him. So. Yes. <laughs> Like stars and... Uh, uh, exactly. He could see a comet, it's a UFO. He could see a plane, it's a UFO. Yes. Uh, so, I want to ask you, because of course you know this person more than I do, because I don't know him. What do you think of this person? What's the impression you get from this person? Uh, That's an important thing to keep in mind, of course. It's, uh, it's a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where you are. Uh, he would tell... He used to, I've, been, I've known this guy for a decade. 
and he would tell me uh, outlandish stories about seeing a UFO near the church, seeing uh, multiple UFOs at night in his field. His son saw something that moved on two feet. Uh, many things, many different things. But how you see it? It's unexplainable because nobody tells you come uh, and see. You see a UFO. If you go twenty times, maybe you one day you you see something. But it's unexplainable. I saw with him the one at at night uh, at night uh, when we took the footage that I showed you. Yes, that yes. one. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Travel through the stars <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the one uh, daylight. That, that I showed you, yes, yeah. that could be a balloon or something that could be explained. I don't know, but it's a strange phenomenon. And then I saw again something flat with him at night. So, so it's strange. Maybe it's the land that he works in. It could, there could be many explanations. For example, um, have you seen, I mentioned optical illusions before, as an explanation. There are certain places where, and you can see videos of it, you can go there yourself. I think there's one in, in there's a place in England that's like this, or, yeah, I think England, I'm not sure. There's a place where it, w you can stand on a road. You just see a normal road. You see a road going uphill, very slightly uphill. So imagine you're standing and you're looking at the road going uphill. You pour water on the road and the water starts going uphill. <laughs> and you can see it on video. It, it, it's an actual place. You can go to, you can do it yourself. What's happening is an optical illusion, obviously, because we know that's not how gravity works. That's not yeah, how water strange, works. That's yeah. not how liquid dynamics works. But... What I want to say from this is your senses in general can be easily fooled. So there are many simple, for example, optical illusions. Have you seen the ones where it's literally just a grid, a, a, a grid, gray lines? Yes. And uh, like you're going to play tic-tac-toe or oxo or whatever you want to call it. But when you look at it in the places where the lines intersect, where they touch each other. You see tiny, tiny, tiny little dots. But when you look at it, the dots aren't there, but from your peripheral vision from the side, you see them there. You go to look, they're not there. You go to look, they're not there. So that's already, that's something very simple, literally just lines, just the grid. So your eyes and your brain are already fooled by that. So when I see a video of something that's so grainy, so far away, to claim it's a UFO uh, would be very difficult for me because I know I can't trust my eyes as well as I would like to. Same with your ears, same with your sense of smell. Everything can be fooled easily. For example, there's an experiment you, you can do yourself. Everyone can do it. Go buy some speakers that allow, that allow you to play very low frequency put them in a room and play something very low frequency. You don't have to hear it. So in fact, sometimes low frequencies, you can't hear them well. But when you enter that room and there's this low frequency hum in this room, even though you don't hear it, you're affected. So you can put it in a room, walk into this room and you'll feel this this strange sense of dread in this room. You'll feel scared in this room. You'll, you'll you can't say why. You're affected by it. You can't see it. And again, literally just buy speakers and try it. It's very simple to do. Put them in a room. Get your mother, your father, your friends, whatever. And just go in this room. Don't tell them anything. <laughs> Don't have to mention it. And you'll see people feel a bit tense, feel a bit... Why? I don't know why it happens mechanically, but you're being affected by something you can't hear. <laughs> That's unexplainable. unexplainable. Yeah, m the question I have, if, or I, if it's not a UFO, then what moves like uh, 
the thing that we filmed. Uh, yes, that's that's my only question. I, that, that, I mean, okay, maybe they're not alien, but what are they? If they are from here, what are what, who built them? Who made them? That's that's the million dollar question at the end of the day. What are they? Because just saying it's a UFO doesn't really accomplish much. Okay, it's a UFO. Let's say it's a UFO. It's, it's an alien spacecraft. Okay. Now what? What is it doing here? Why is it here? Uh, we so need we need studies. Yes, uh, if, studies. Uh, if that's an actual alien aircraft, then yes. Be even if it's not an uh, an alien aircraft, maybe it's a threat or uh, in, in our airspace. Could be for for example, uh, I mean balloons, spying balloons. Uh, are something that have been around for years and uh, this last week <laughs> of course <laughs> now you might say right it's a balloon how has no one seen a balloon it's, it's a big balloon a lot of the times what ends up happening with these things is they're sent to obviously spy on other nations and some of them will be in the shape of a balloon some of them will be long some so of them will be short why are all these different things different Or shapes edge it with air. exactly why are they such strange shapes Now, as far as I know, I'm not some expert on this, obviously. I'm not in the military. I can't tell you with 100% certainty. But as far as I know, the reason for the different shapes and different materials and the strange shapes at the end of the day, because no one's going to say it's a weather balloon when it's triangular or has tons of edges, is because they're trying to get around so stuff like sonar. Ah. So... To evade the, the, the exactly. Radar and stuff. So you know they have sonar. You want to spy on them. You know they have sonar. So your thought is, how can I avoid sonar? Now I don't know how sonar works 100. I don't know how to avoid it. I don't know. But as far as I know, there's these different shapes because they're trying to see what works. So sometimes uh, countries know they're being spied on. For example. Uh, with these balloons or these drones and they don't shoot them down on purpose why if you're being spied on you want the other person to think their plan is working because if the minute they send uh, a balloon towards you you shoot it down then they've still gained knowledge. What have they gained? They've said, okay, this doesn't work. So. <laughs> so let's try something else. But if you know it's there, you leave it there. You work around it. You give them some information. Then they think it's working. So they'll keep wasting time with it. The same things happened in wars constantly. In World War II, for example, when the, they managed to crack the German encryption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew all their plans, but they couldn't act on all of them. Why? Because if they did, then the Germans would wake up and say, listen, they know everything we're doing. So clearly, they've cracked the code. So we have to change it. We have to do something else. But if you act on 20, 30% of, of this information, they can say, oh, maybe it's a coincidence. They just knew it or they got lucky. So sometimes I do think these strange sightings are in fact these balloons or drones or spy machines sent by other nations just to spy on people. And that's why they're like a sausage or, or a triangle, the, something the, you look at and go, no one's going to make this, this isn't a plane. In the, fir in the first world, they used to send the hot air balloons to spy on other <laughs> other <laughs> nations. So <laughs> it's an old practice. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, do you think that it's worth it to pursue this topic of UFOs and studies on them around the world? Generally? It's a difficult one because I don't believe these are UFOs that are alien spaceships. So in that case, if you're going to tell me, do you want to study these alien spaceships? I'm going to say no, because that's a waste of time because they're not alien spaceships. But I do believe some of them are natural phenomena that we don't currently understand. So we should study those. For example... 
have you ever seen a video of uh, lightning when lightning strikes a place and suddenly there are these just like balls of electricity moving okay yes a very interesting to look at i can't tell you what that is if you show me that video when you know could be magic <laughs> to, to me i can't explain that but there is an explanation for them with electromagnetism the atmosphere why they travel the way they do and i don't think it's it's been that long that they figured out what that actually is so stuff like that is worth pursuing to me but in terms of aliens i don't believe they've come here and when i say i don't believe in aliens i mean i don't believe they've come to visit us i do believe somewhere in the universe there could be aliens i I, ca- be, i can't say yeah. no it's universe is so huge i'm on a tiny planet on a tiny solar system i'm not going to say there's no aliens do i think they're they're here no why because even if we take the closest solar system to us it's so far away hmm. that for a civilization to have the technology to visit us and be able to monitor us in a short time yes in a short time and this is just if it's from the nearest solar, <laughs> solar system. system they would be so technologically advanced compared to us they'd know so much more about physics than we do so much more about probably mathematics and biology and then and chemistry than we do that to us these beings might as well be gods for us to ants for example we i'm sure to ants we're <laughs> gods we're huge we we can drive around in cars that we made and we don't go talk to ants exactly to ants uh, to ants we are some sort of god definitely to us ants are insignificant you don't think about the ants you look at them and look how cool they're making a hill oh how nice <laughs> and you leave so to think that some alien comes here and just looks at us and sends a balloon to look at us i think doesn't make sense because they'd be so technologically advanced that i'm sure that if they exist and they have that technology they can come here look at us and we would have absolutely no clue that they're even anywhere close to us same thing that like tom delong said they can take a coke from my hand i wouldn't and even put know. it in yours exactly and i wouldn't even know and that's if then in the nearest solar system to us which as far as we know they aren't if you're talking about on the other end of the galaxy that's 70 80000 light years away <laughs> light years and more years <laughs> exactly so, so it's impossible just to travel that distance let's say it's somehow possible through physics that we don't understand because of course we and when i say we i mean humanity as humanity, a whole yes. i don't know much about physics or it were particle physics or theoretical space travel but from what we know as physics there are limitations there's the speed of light which is the speed of causality and you can't go above that you can't just suddenly go faster than light but let's say there is a way to circumvent that to to, to i don't know maybe wormholes or or maybe there's some other physics we just haven't even started understanding and thinking about yet and these aliens know about it and they use it to come visit us again they would be so technologically advanced at that point more than these aliens that are maybe half a light year away they've traveled 80,000 light years to come to us i think it'd be silly to see them in little donut shaped spaceships <laughs> in, in some field in marsa <laughs> popping down weather balloons to look at us i'm sure they could immediately destroy us if they wanted to <laughs> immediately and if they wanted to kidnap us we'd have no clue because how do we know our sonar would catch them for example it's impossible uh, how do we know we can if they they can traverse uh, huge distances 80000 flight in short time exactly you'd have to know physics we don't because uh, to us that is impossible that's and if they go back and if you think about it if they go back of course they have to come m- here see us and then go back how much time they would have lost exactly. to come and go do they lose a little bit time and how long do they live uh, 
and their body, how it would be constructed. Maybe it's an AI, an AI not just that could be, uh, but exactly a body. For, for example, uh, an alien in a body. Yeah, just w- uh, one of the things is when I listen to these alien stories and. I do listen to a lot of them just because I'm a skeptic doesn't mean I don't listen to them because I believe that in order to not believe in something you have to do research about it so one thing I find hard to believe is in in these stories most of them let me say most of them because I'm sure it's not all of them but most of them when they describe this alien being it's almost a human it's it's got a head it has two eyes it has a face, it has two arms, it has two legs, it has a torso, it has a body. It looks like a human. Now, even just looking at the animals that exist on our planet, there are so many animals I look at and I go, man, these things, what are these things? <laughs> See you Why? Like. You look at the giraffe. Why does it have its <laughs> neck so long? Why? So... Uh, to then accept that an alien coming from uh, a solar system that's 10,000, 20,000 light years away looks like us. Maybe. Is, is so strange because I'd find that more interesting than why they're coming here. Because then there's a question of does all intelligent life eventually evolve into this human-like shape we have, this all-intelligent life, get two arms with thumbs and legs and the torso. Or that's way more interesting to me than why they're here at that point. Let's say they're not coming from space. Okay. And maybe it's an old AI system left behind. Left behind here on this planet. Yes, from our ancestors. Because you, you look at the pyramids, they're, general, they're power stations. So In what way do you mean the power stations? They have water going under it. And they have granite. They're like power, oh, nuclear power reactors. To so keep something cool, they have water under going under. So if you see a, a reactor, nuclear reactor, it always have water to cool it down, flow. So I think uh, there is something, uh, tech- maybe it's something technological left behind from our ancestors from the past. In the case of the pyramids, I, I do hear a lot of people mention the pyramids in relation to aliens. So clearly humans have been, let's not say humans for now, humans have been building pyramids for thousands of years. And not just in Egypt. Everywhere. North Africa, South Africa, Australia, South America. Places where you go back 4,000 years. No one from South America even knows Africa exists. Even even further, because Robert Shaw. Even sooner, 600 years ago, many people in South America had no clue Africa existed to them. It was just South America. (laughs) This is the planet. So clearly they didn't contact each other to say, hey, we're building a pyramid here. Oh, that's cool. Let's build one here. Uh, Do you know the studies that made Robert Cho? It's a familiar name, but... Robert Cho analyzed these things and found... uh, corrosion on this thing yes, yes that dated yes. back uh, when egypt was still uh, like a rainforest yes, the egyptians found the sphinx there yes because the, the, the head of the sphinx is they he says too small yeah. for the body of the sphinx the so they probably found a sphinx there or whatever it was called at that point not the sphinx and they said we have this here let's not remove it let's do something with it. They made the head there. That's, that's something I can believe because civilization started thousands and thousands of years ago. And you have to remember, back then, people didn't have much to do. They didn't have their phones to scroll through. So one of the things they did constantly all around the world, the Hypergeum here, Malta, Stonehenge, is build these structures that were either for sacrifice, for rituals, for praying, or sometimes 
even just for fun, I'm sure of it. Because we've all done something in our lives that's... Why are you doing this? Monuments. I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> it doesn't have a purpose. But uh, I think um, the way I see it, pyramids uh, are so technologically advanced that even today we can't build them. So maybe, I maybe. I don't think there's a reason we can't build the pyramids, though. The stones, yeah. should this short time, it's a little bit impossible. It would take 70 years to build the big pyramid. And the possibly, uh, but the I and within with lots those of lines. slaves can do a lot of things because remember back then you wanted to build something it was very simple let's grab all of these people here I don't care if they die I don't want to feed them you have to build a pyramid you don't have to like it you're building a pyramid but uh, tell me how can you put a, a stone in a thirty degree angle. If you put a heavy stone on a 30-degree angle, it starts to slide. I can't do it. That's why I'm not an architect or an engineer. Uh, but listen. back then, they had or if they architects, pecked, they had engineers. If they picked this, ends, this end to build it, okay? You know how much many cent would, would it take? Yes, but just because it would take a lot doesn't mean it can't happen. Again, you th the Romans, for example... I think it's very impressive how the Romans built the aqueducts and the roads that stretch for kilometers and kilometers and, and kilometers they're still good today. all throughout Europe. Exactly, they're <laughs> still good today. Obviously, they weren't roads built for cars, so they had to take less stress on them. But you tell me, do that. 2,000 years after, you could give me all the tools on the planet. I have no clue. I can't do that. But they could. Why? Because back then they still had people who were architects, people who were similar to what we'd call engineers today. These people have always existed. And I think people underestimate just raw manpower. When you have, when you want to build a road, what the Romans would do is they'd grab thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and that's their job. That's what they did. Making That's it. Road. They didn't have government mandated breaks. They didn't have seven people all looking at the pothole and one guy trying <laughs> to fix it. That's your job. You don't do that. You are getting beat. You are getting killed. Your family is going to be sold into slavery. So it still took a long, long time. It's still a marvelous accomplishment. But the pyramids, to me, are something that could be done would take it would be a huge waste of time first of all because they would serve no purpose to us if today we wanted to build a pyramid it would be because we want to build a pyramid so it's a waste of time essentially but you under i think you us everyone sometimes underestimates just if you throw thousands of people at a project and go this is your job you get things done so why they went to the trouble to make the pyramid points, if you measure them all together, they come out as the speed of light? Well, so they must be accurate. Well, I, I'm not as familiar with that as I would like to be to answer you. However, I'm aware of what you're saying and what the theory is. I think... Part of it is the question itself. When you say, why'd they go to the trouble of building it to be that way? One of the very simple answers could be, and it's boring and no one wants to hear it, but could be that they didn't build it that way. It just happened. Happened. It turned out that way. No, it's, that's a boring answer. No one wants that answer because it's, no, oh, okay. They, it, it, it just happened. Yeah, it's a coincidence. It's not an entertaining answer. But it's still an option. <laughs> yes, it's it's very much an option. And sometimes the simplest solution is the solution. It's called Occam's Razor. The most simple explanation for something is usually the explanation for something. Not always. We have to keep that in mind. Not always. But a few points I'd like to say about that is... Number one, I think we tend to view past civilizations as more interesting than they actually were why because to us what they did makes no sense 
why are these pyramids there? Because to us, we have no use for a pyramid. If someone came to Malta nowadays and said, let's build a pyramid in the middle of Haloa, <laughs> you laugh because it's funny. Because <laughs> why? People would call him crazy. Why build a pyramid? <laughs> we already have a bunch of issues already. We don't need your pyramid here. So we tend to look back at these at these structures, such as the pyramids, such as Stonehenge, and go, why did they build this? It must have some ceremonial use, some festive use, some prayer use. We want there to be an answer for this thing. We, you know, they built it. Why? There has to be an answer. It could very well be that the, the answer is, why did they build it? Because they wanted to. Because the pharaoh wanted a pyramid there. And are you going to go up to the pharaoh and go, do we need a pyramid? No. It's a bit too much. <laughs> exactly. No one's going to go up to him. Listen, this is the 12th pyramid this week. No, you're not going to say that. He wants a pyramid. He's getting a pyramid. So that's one thing. I think we tend to look at it with a lens where everything needs to have an interesting answer. Well, not everything is going to have an interesting answer, unfortunately, <laughs> even though that's the way we'd like it. Now, in terms of the question you asked previously before we came to this about AI, if it was built by AI or if it's a power generator for, for an AI, I mean, it could be. I, I don't have the evidence to tell you it's not. That's something that I always say. I can't tell you no. I can tell you I don't think so and why. I think if there was a civilization that was advanced enough to build an AI, uh, at that level surely we'd find something because recently for example there's the, these new chat AIs I don't know if you've been using them there's chat GPT there's the new one the, the Bing I, chat I saw something but uh, I use them just curiosity just to see what, <laughs> what, what these are and some of the answers are impressive but some of them are absolute nonsense and rubbish. So I think it's still impressive technology, very impressive technology, but even currently as we are, we're so far away from being able to build an AI that would be capable of such a thing that a civilization that could build something like that would be so advanced compared to us that surely we'd find some traces of their existence that isn't just a pyramid, surely you'd find a building, something. So I don't particularly believe that it could be some AI power station or anything of the sort. Not to mention that if we're talking about something like energy, like nuclear energy, for example, we can, uh, uh, in regards to paintings, one of the way they can one of the ways they can detect a forgery in painting is if you have a painting made in 1868 and a painting made today so th this painting in, in 1868 because it was made before the second world war before the first atomic bomb after that first atomic bomb it's going to be it's going to have radiation on it it's going to be contaminated because that radiation got in the air it's going to disperse everywhere in the atmosphere etc et exactly a painting made nowadays wouldn't have that because it was made after. many 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 years after the the atomic bomb so if if this if, if the pyramid was some sort of nuclear power plant you be able to detect these traces of radiation, radiation. coming out from it. So I, I don't think that's particularly a strong argument for it. So again, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never been inside <laughs> the pyramid. I don't think I ever will be allowed inside the pyramid. And if you are, I'm sure there's a certain section you're allowed to look at and you cannot go anywhere else. Why? Who knows? Many mysterious things who know, who from knows? the past. Yes, uh, but again, it goes back to, I think sometimes things were done just because. For fun or boredom? Mm, yes, yes, fun and boredom. Today you're bored, you scroll on your phone. Thousands of years ago you didn't have a phone, so you're bored. Hey, there's a rock there, let's make it in the shape <laughs> of a butt. 
<laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you can drive by people's houses and realize who's bored and not because you can look at someone's house and like, oh, that's a nice house. Then you can you can look at someone's house and you can see as all the columns there and they're all detailed very finely <laughs> and the windows have detailing on them. That's someone who spent a lot of time and money on that house. Why? <laughs> you could just live in a square. He likes it, or they like it. Complicated things. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I think in general, we we underestimate manpower. Just throwing people at the problem. We want to build a pyramid. Just grab thousands of people, whether they want to or not. They're going to make it. And I think we tend to want things to be interesting, even if they're not. Because of course that's entertaining. <clears throat> no one wants to hear. They just did it because. For the fun. And the AI thing. I don't know. Knowing what we currently have as AI. And it's again impressive, but still so. so primitive. So far and away from being able to control the world. That. Uh, I think surely a civilization that advanced would have something else we could find so some buildings some some technology something something left behind exactly but we haven't found that yet or maybe they found it and they don't well, uh, yes possibly could be again you can't you can never be sure about these things if it was just us in the universe it would be one big lonely universe <laughs> yes it would be um the universe is so large so large so some people say it's infinitely large i don't know if it's infinitely large it's very large for sure i personally do think that somewhere out there if not in our galaxy then in another galaxy out of the hundreds of thousands of possibly millions and billions of galaxies there are. is there something else i think there probably is is it here visiting us uh, i don't think so because that would again make them essentially gods to us especially if we talked about being even 10,000 70,000 light years away imagine a being coming from another galaxy to us that's that's something so unimaginable to us that and for them to then look like us, have two arms, two legs, and just be green instead of <laughs> uh, instead of white or black or her, uh, would be very boring. And especially if it's like a carbon-based life form, a silicon-based life form, these would be so different. You look at this planet, you look at fish, you look at how different fish are, certain fish so you grab two fish. Certain fish would be fish A and fish B. Fish B could be more related to a hippo than it is to fish to, to this fish here. But you look at them with your eyes and you say, "This is a fish. This is a fish. They're closely related." They're both fish. They're both fish. That's what we say. They're both fish. But In different ways. Yes, of course. I, I mean. But again, you look at some fish in the depth of the ocean. These g giant, ugly fish. <laughs> These fish that create light. They use. Uh, uh, forgot the name. And this, this scary yeah, there's, one. There's, there's, there's the, more the than jagitti. one. There, there's more than one. That's that's so weird, and that's on our planet. Imagine how that. But you're telling me some being from Alpha Centauri is. He comes here and has five fingers on his hand and is this big and looks like me <laughs> and their spacecraft is, looks like something I could ride in I personally find that weird <laughs> or maybe they are empty like drones yes, they could be unmanned spacecraft as well but uh, again to control them from that distance uh, sometimes you can use a controller from 20 feet away and you'd have half a second <laughs> of delay so 
Oh, I, one of the other things as well is you have to remember when we're looking out there at other planets, you're, all, you're always looking at things in the past. Because, of course, the light has to travel to you. So even if you look at the moon, now the moon is quite close to us in the grand scheme of the universe. It is very close to us. But even there, you're not seeing the moon exactly as it is at that There's second. There's a delay. There's a delay. The light from the sun takes, I believe, eight minutes to get to us. So we're seeing the sun and don't look at the sun. Please don't look at the sun. I have to say that. <laughs> but if you were to look at the sun, don't do it. You'd see the sun as it was eight minutes, minutes ago. ago. The sun could have exploded in that eight minutes. You'd have absolutely no clue. After eight minutes. After eight minutes, you would know. <laughs> Or you probably wouldn't because it would probably instantly destroy mm. the planet. So you still wouldn't know the sun would have exploded. But... It's so, great to speculate on it. It's very great. But again, these aliens would be looking at us from so far away that they wouldn't be seeing you and I. In real time. Exactly. They'd be seeing the planet 70,000, 80,000 years ago. They could still be looking at the dinosaurs if they're especially far away. So th then they might come here and suddenly go, where are the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> عشان لسه هنكمبلي كنت سنايد لك الساجات نكلم ليلو ياتك كنت سنايد لك الفات اللي داو الناس ياهم كلها اسمهم ماني ماني منيشين اش بقى ما سميت انت الساعة كيف تاف اللي داو ما كياتو هيز وما احنا دي ام جيش ساعي جيش دي يستيكون اي اي يني خاهس لي لي عني مالي فلافكا لي الخيبو نايدك داش شيب في غداسك بس وما تيجوا عليين من نخالو خيط الغالاسيا وعندهم راس جاينين بهدين ساعين ساك بطهم خطهم الكيابي وستاي تلبسهم واي ما دونا اش نمن اشين عليا يا جاي عليين كيابي واي ما بيعرف يشتغل الله Grazie a tutti per il podcast. Amlo like, share e subscribe. Ma stai in una